Today I'm going to talk about working with files that are too large to fit uh, in a computer's live memory. So if you're brand new to R, you may not have encountered this, but uh, you will eventually, we all do, deal with this from time to time. The problem happens when calling functions such as read.csv or read.table on a large data file and the computer ends up freezing or choking uh, and just hangs there for a long time. I personally lose patience and just kill the process. Um, I know what's going on. Uh, at least in R, you cannot open a, a 20 gigabyte file on a computer with only 8 gigs of RAM. It just won't work. Uh, R, by default, R likes to load everything in live memory. Even files that are smaller than your RAM may not uh, be opened. Uh, on that computer depending on what's going on on the computer, the, the bit architecture, the OS, etc. So um, there's a, a, um, a guesstimate to find out how much uh, memory a data, a data frame will require. Um, an integer takes about 4 bytes and a float or numeric takes about 8 bytes. So um, if you have a data set made of um, uh, 8, here we'll, we'll, we'll calculate it out, uh, made uh, just of numerics, so uh, 8 bytes, you have 100 columns, and uh, let's say you have 100,000 rows. Um, 100,000 rows, so well, that's not going to help us. Um, if you divide it by uh, 2 to the power of 20, it'll give you megabytes. So here, this, uh, this file need 76 megabytes of free RAM to load it in memory so most computers will have a problem on me and my MacBook I will have no problem loading it up but that's that's a fairly small uh, size what you a uh, small uh, data set what you do when uh, it's too big for uh, for your computer well there are various ways of dealing with with that uh, you could use a command line tool that would break up your file in many little files and you could deal with them individually that way. You could uh, rent a computer on, um, on a cloud service, just a big computer with a lot of RAM. Or you could use uh, a few of the uh, packages and R that, um, that do um, uh, hard drive caching. But there's an easy R solution that I use all the time to uh, deal with very large files. Uh, and that's to, um, to uh, process them chunk by chunk. So um, actually, I have a I have a large file I can show as an example. Um, we'll use the uh, the file function here. It's called the file. It's called transactions. CSV. If you I mean it has a size function, so it'll tell us. Well, that's not gonna help us either. Um, if you divide it by 2 to the power of 30, it will give us gigabytes there. So I have a file here, transactions.csv, that's almost 20 gigabytes. So that's a huge file. There's no way I can load that on my machine. I think I have 8 gigabytes of, uh, of RAM. So um, there is, a, to just, to, to even estimate the size of it, you need to be able to peek into it to see what is in that file. So the, there's a workhorse of functions, is the read line read lines function and it's a capital L here and it's very simple to use you just pass it the file name and how many lines you want to read so we'll do three lines this will give us the header and two lines of data and there we have it so here are our columns column headers and some data so we see that this is a 20 gigabyte file yet it only has you know a handful of columns so we know this is a very long file with a huge amount of rows um, so this definitely needs to be uh, dealt with in chunks um, and uh, we could loop through this file uh, using the read line the read lines function but um, I prefer to use the read.table which offers similar uh, features um, and I'll show you how it works so um, we'll create a uh, actually I'm going to cut and paste because I have these already written We'll create a, a variable to hold the file name, transact file, a variable to um, 
hold the chunk size that we, we're going to pull each time. I'm, gonna, I'm setting it to 100,000. But if this is work, if I was doing it at work, I'd probably do at least a million rows, try to get it done uh, the most efficiently uh, possible, use my memory in an efficient way, and so it doesn't take forever. But it'll be faster for uh, for the demo. Then you create a, um, a connection object. So the connection object is basically it uses the file function and it holds uh, the, the the variable, uh, the the file, and what it's going to do with it, it's just going to open it for reading because you could you know uh, use it for reading, reading binaries and writing, etc. We just need to read, and this is this is uh, using the connection object is very important here. You'll see why it's very soon, and then you can. Um, create the uh, the read that table function so a variable to hold our data read that table this is a you know we've all used the read that table we pass it the connection the end rows uh, needs to know the size that we want so we're passing a chunk size which is a hundred thousand rows the header we want fill that true so it will uh, you know it will fix missing uh, uh, miss, m missing data and the separator it's comma delimited so, and the next thing is very important is when you open a connection object is to close it. So, um, close connection, and there we just close it. So, I just actually ran this, so let's see what it pulled. And there we have it. It pulled uh, the first 100,000 rows of this data set. So, that's kind of the idea of um, what I'm going to show today. It's basically creating a file that will do this a chunk by chunk until it has read the entire file. So the next thing we got to do is work on some kind of loop that will uh, that will proceed to the next hundred thousand when it's done. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do this up here. So I create a variable called index that's just gonna hold the let's do it up here. That's gonna hold where we are at the chunk size. Same thing as we had before. The connection object and here we go the data chunk okay now the next step is to repeat this so we're going to use the repeat and here we're going to increment this index variable so we know uh, what what chunk we're working on currently and we're going to print it for these very long files, it's nice to know where uh, the reading is, where we are in the reading of this huge file. Then, with any time you use the repeat, the big thing is to make sure you break out of it because this thing will keep looping forever. So here, we check every time we read a chunk. It says, "Is the size of the chunk we just read not equal to the chunk size that we asked for, the hundred thousand?" Row. So any time is smaller than what we'd asked for, we know we're dealing with the last chunk of data. So we can uh, do a print statement, but more importantly, break out of this loop. And if it's not breaking out, that means there's still uh, data to read. And we do the same thing as we did up here. Data chunk, same thing. Except that we are skipping. We're not skipping anything. And we don't want the header because at this point there's no more header. Uh, it's just data, so we want everything. Um, and just for the sake of example, here I'm going to break out the second time we run this. So let's run this. See how this goes. And there it processed the first hundred thousand. So we read it once. We pulled a hundred thousand. It told us we pulled a hundred thousand. It's not the end. And it read the second chunk. It didn't print it because. It didn't print the second time around because I'm breaking out of it. But let's see what we pulled. Um, okay. Okay, actually I called data. I called the old variable. That's my fault for having calling it for having called it two different names. I meant to call this guy data chunk. Here we go. So this is what I was trying to get to. This is the second set. So there's no more headers. So we know we're reading the second set. The problem is we want the headers because we will be using this to do something, and we need headers. So that's actually easy to remedy too. 
we would call we would create another variable after you pull the first chunk of data which holds a header and we would pass it um, the header names the column names and here we just assign it um, I think call names equals and pass that to it so let's run this again okay unless um, I apparently forgot to close the connection now I see it I just forgot to do this very bad always close your connection there we go um, and now let's go ahead data chunk and there we have it it's, it's pull, it has pulled all the column names so we have um, we have read through everything uh, through two rows and it, it swapped the column names uh, the way we want it so now you understand how this uh, chunking mechanism works we need to do something with this data we just don't need to loop through it so um, I'm going to show you how to uh, for, for as an example calculate the mean of the data we're reading so we had two more variables a counter and a purchase amount and we're going to calculate the mean of the purchase amount column and here there we're gonna increment the purchase amount with a sum of all the purchase amounts in that chunk and a counter count how many rows we've read and increment all that and at the end after we close the connection we will print out the result there let's run this there you have it four dollars and fifty cents is the mean it really is the mean of the first chunk because we're breaking out so we don't we don't have time to do anything else so what we could do is instead of breaking out here we could go um, if index is bigger than five then break let's run this again so we can see it process a little bit more so now it's processing a few rows and it's soon going to break out and there it should break out and there the mean is four dollars and forty five cents etc so there you have it this is um, it shows you how to chunk uh, how to work through chunks of data this is not going to work for everything it won't work for example for a median where you need to have the entire data the entire picture and um, uh, so you can sort everything and then pick values in the middle but anything you can get anything you can work under this design will be uh, easy to parallel or distribute down the road uh, because uh, you can process things are being processed independently chunk by chunk thus it's easy to distribute on different machines on different cores etc so that's that's a, a good way of thinking of um, breaking your your work uh, as is as extensible uh, for larger tasks I uh, hope this helps thank you